everybody. I'll be talking about theft crimes for the night. Theft crimes can be very complicated because you need to prove every single element. And you also need to prove the mens rea of these theft crimes in order for the defendant to be liable for that specific crime. So I'll be going through larceny, robbery, embezzlement, false pretenses, and lastly, burglary. Burglary, arguably, and I'll get into that soon, can be a residential crime too. However, it involves theft as well. So that's why it's in this video. So first off, let's get into larceny. Larceny means the trespassery taking and carrying away of another's property with the specific intent to permanently deprive. What does all these words mean? Well, what does all this mean? Let's go element by element. As I said before, they all have their individual meanings. Improving every single element is critical because that will determine whether the defendant is liable or not liable for that crime. So the trespassery element means simply that the defendant did not have permission by the owner to take the item. That's what it means. Simple as that. Taking means the defendant actually took the item. An example is me taking this eraser from my school, put it in my pocket, and I leave. That's an example of larceny. However, when I think about this element that I'm talking about here, taking is just me simply holding it, just taking it. That is what it means. Moreover, I could be using an instrument to take away this item. And that becomes an extension of my body. So I had some type of item to get a hold of it and move it. The moment I move it with that item, that is an extension of my body. It's as if my arms are, are the item itself, okay? So the carrying away element of it is me actually moving the item slightly. It could be inches, centimeters or even millimeters as long as i move the item that constitutes a carrying away it doesn't have to be something where i take the item and run out of school and go home no the moment i move it even slightly that is the element of carrying away okay so we go to the element of another's property self-explanatory okay We'll say I, the defendant, want to take this eraser, okay? I take it, carry it away, and I know in my mind that this item belongs to my school. This is not my property, it belongs to another. That's what that means. And although my school technically isn't here, the dean isn't here, they still have constructive possession of this item. So let's get into the second to the last element is the specific intent. That is critical for larceny. Larceny is a specific intent crime. I went through this in a lot of videos. So if you wanna know the, what the mens rea of a crime is when a defendant commits a crime, watch that video and you understand what this actually means. Okay, the defendant thought about it and he wanted to do it anyway. Okay, I get into it in a deeper way in my other videos. So go into there. Or go to those videos to understand what that means. The last element is to permanently deprive. That the defendant had the specific intent to permanently deprive the owner of the item. Okay? Let's just say that, I'll use my eraser example. Let's say that I have the specific intent to permanently deprive my school of this eraser. Okay? I made trespass retaking because they don't want me to keep this, this is their property. So I end up making the taking, which is me holding on to it. And really taking it and move it away, even inches. This property belongs to my school. Remember, another property, another property. And also, I have the specific intent to probably deprive my school of this eraser, and I take it home and I keep it for myself. That is technically a larceny. Okay? Another better example than this eraser example is that, let's just say that my brother, Fikri, 
wants to take my cell phone. He hates iPhones, but he secretly wants my iPhone in order to sell it to get some big bucks. Okay, so let's say Bickery comes to my home. He makes a trespass retaking of my iPhone without my permission. He takes it by grabbing a hold of my iPhone. He carries it away, even inches, but he carries it away by going into his car with my phone in his pocket, in his possession, and drives off. And the other's property is my property, right? Like this, like I said, the iPhone belongs to me, right? And my brother, Vickery, has the specific intent to permanently deprive me of my iPhone in order to go to a pawn shop and get money from it. That is the classic example of what a larceny is. Even shoplifting is not an example of it. Assuming that the person gets away with it. If the person who shoplifts gets away with it, that's a larceny. If the person gets stopped by the security guards or the cops before he leaves the store, that is an attempted larceny. An attempt is explained in my other videos. So you want to know what attempt means, go to that video. So let's go to robbery. Let's, let's transition to, law, to robbery. So robbery is the, is the larceny in the immediate presence of the victim with force or fear. Larceny is what we just said, simple as that. When you think about this element, the defendant must have intended to commit a larceny, right? The trespass taking care of another's pocket with, with the specific intent to currently deprive. That is what that element means. The second element of robbery is in the immediate presence of the victim, okay? So for example, this is the classic example of someone committing a larceny in the immediate presence of the victim, including force or fear, is a robber, a bigger man, trying to steal a purse from a woman. Okay, he has the mental intent that he wants to commit this larceny. He's in her immediate presence because he has the desire to take her purse and the contents of whatever is in it. And he's using force or fear by physically taking away from her and or using a gun as a threat to scare her. That's where the fear comes in. Can be force or fear to scare her to give it up, right? And if someone voluntarily gives up their chattel to another because of fear, that's not true consent. Moreover, when we think about force, because it'd be force or fear, one of the two, you know, force, it could be the defendant, the robber against a woman who uses his actual body to physically rip it out of her hands. That is an example of the defendant using force to complete the crime. That is a classic example of what a robbery is, okay? Again, this is a specific intent crime because think about it, we just talked about larceny. Larceny is a specific intent crime. Therefore, because it's one of the elements of robbery, robbery is a specific intent crime. Let's get into embezzlement. Embezzlement is the fraudulent taking of entrusted property, okay? An example of embezzlement, I think the perfect example of embezzlement is actually you voluntarily entrusting your property to a valet, okay? The valet guy, you, know, you give him your keys to park your car and he ends up stealing your car, right? You entrusted your property, entrusted, this is the key word here, you entrusted your property to the valet guy and he made the fraudulent taking of it by taking advantage of that entrustment. That is an example of what embezzlement is. Another example could be that, hey, um, I give my buddy my, my, my um, let's say my gym membership for a couple months, right? And he takes advantage of it by trying to take that away from me. Or I think a better example, actually, not the gym membership but example, I think a better example is that I loan my buddy a bike because he needs it to get to work. And I entrust him with that property. I entrust my buddy with the bike. However, he has the intent, the specific intent, 
to fraudulently take it away from me by never giving the bike back to me ever again. That is an example of embezzlement. Okay. But at the same time, it really depends on the intent of the defendant. All right, burglary. And I, think, I just want to mention this, that this is under the common law. This definition is under the common law. There are two definitions I'm going to go through. CL for common law. We're going to go through the common law version of this, and we're going to go through the modern version of this. So under the common law, burglary is the breaking and entering in the dwelling house of another during the nighttime with the specific intent to commit a larceny or felony therein. This is why I tied it into this video with theft crimes because the defendant could either be intending to commit a larceny or the defendant could just be trying to commit any type of felony. So it can be either situation. But in most crim law exams, a larceny is, is mainly the intent, but don't assume that. It could be any felony. Any felony can suffice for a situation like this. So, Bra um, the we're burglary on the common law. Let's go through it element by element because remember I talked about how critical it is to prove every element in order to see whether the defendant is liable or not liable for burglary. So first off, let's talk about breaking. Breaking is basically the fraudulent way of trying to break into someone's home. Let's just say you try to bust someone's window or they're sewing a rock, using some type of tool to unlock a lock, or maybe go through the window, right? Maybe you can use a toolbar just to crank open the window. That's an example of trying to break into that person's house, okay? So under the common law, is under a dwelling house. We'll get into that in a second. So entering, as simple as that, is basically someone literally going into someone else's house. And physically entering, or instrumentally entering. This is how I said before, when it comes down to larceny, you can use an instrument that will act as an extension of your body to complete that crime. So you can do the same thing in burglary. The defendant could be using an instrument to enter the person's dwelling house, okay? That is very critical in entering, okay? And as long as you even make some type of entering, it doesn't even matter. For example, you can use a tool to bust open the window, right? But as long as that tool itself makes some type of opening or the tool itself gets into the home, that technically constitutes not only a breaking, but that constitutes an entering as well. That's very, very critical to think about, okay? So the common law in the third element here has it of the dwelling house of another. That's very important here, the dwelling house of another. So basically where someone sleeps in, their castle per se. Someone's house, an apartment, 
or even I see some homeless people on the street who will sleep under a tent. That technically constitutes their dwelling house because that is their castle. And of another, very simple, a dwelling house that does not belong to you. It belongs to someone else. So we get to the second and last element during the nighttime, under the common law is sunset to sunrise. Simple as that. As long as it's dark, that's what constitutes the nighttime element. Sunset to sunrise. Lastly, with the specific intent to commit a larceny of felony they're in. We already talked about larceny. Okay, I'm not gonna go through that again. However, the defendant must have that specific intent. Because remember, even burglary is a specific intent crime. Remember, it's all specific intent crimes here. So the defendant must have the specific intent to commit a larceny, it's a theft crime, or a felony therein. It could be any felony. It doesn't really matter what the felony may be. It could be any felony there is. As long as the defendant had that requisite intent before they committed the act, that they were gonna commit a larceny or felony inside the dwelling house of another, that can constitute a burglary. They don't even have to complete the crime. See, the defendant doesn't have to complete the larceny, doesn't have to complete the felony that they want to desire to uh, commit inside the house, as long as the defendant had the requisite intent, this intent, the specific intent, to commit a larceny felony therein. And of course, these elements have to be proven as well. The defendant is liable for, for, for uh, burglary. So the defendant had the example. Let's say that A had the intent to commit a larceny in B's home, okay? B makes a breaking by breaking B's lock. A enters the home by physically going into the home. It's the dwelling house of another, it's B's home, right? Belong, the dwelling house belongs to B. And it's during the nighttime, let's say it happens at 11 p.m., it's dark outside. And A, before entering and breaking into B's home, had the specific intent to commit a larceny or wanting to steal B's jewels. But let's say that A is scared and doesn't commit that larceny. So although A did not complete the larceny therein, A is still liable for burglary. That is what's critical about burglary under the common law. The same thing goes for any felony therein. The felony or the larceny does not have to be completed within the home. That's the main thing to take away from this last element here. So let's get into the modern law version of what burglary is. Then we can wrap this up. ML for modern law. Modern law version is very simple when compared to the common law version. So, the modern law version of burglary, like we already talked about, has the same as two of the same elements as uh, common law. So it has burglary. I mean, it has uh, excuse me, uh, it has breaking. It has entering. The same, the same meanings, right? Breaking is, for example, breaking a lock. Entering is someone physically going into the structure or instrumentally, which acts as, as, a, as a section of their body, into the structure. Same deal. So we get into the last element, which is very, very different than the common law version, is in the structure of another, which means a building, a room, an office, or even a gas station. That is what the structure piece of it means. It does not have to be the dwelling house of another, and also, the nighttime element is not here, so it can be during the day. It doesn't matter what time of day it may be, night or day, as long as the defendant created a breaking, 
entered the place and it's in the structure of another, the crime of burglary under the modern law is completed. Example of this, let's say that one of my buddies, let's say uh, James, wants to commit a burglary. He wants to make a breaking and entering of a structure of another, let's say Walmart. He wants to break into Walmart, enter the Walmart, and he has the intent, the specific intent, to commit a crime in there, okay? As long as he does the breaking and entering in the structure of Walmart, he technically is liable for burglary under the modern law. That's technically what the modern law is under burglary. So I hope these explanations helped. If you have any questions, to simply comment beneath the comment section. I'll answer it. I thank you for using your time to watch this video.